go make some bone broth. Let's, we're not going to make bone broth. Jay Parker here. Greg Hollenbach is out for the night. To my right is the young and handsome uh, Brian Freeman from Growers Organic. We're back. And also on the phone is Scott. And I can't, I'm, ter I'm usually good at people's names, and Greg's the bad one, but I'm terrified to say his last name. I want to say Washkoviak. Say it, Scott. <laughs> Washkoviak is the expression that you nailed at bullseye man nice work oh okay well that sounded good w w on that note Koviak. welcome to the show scott are you there with jessica i'm uh, jessica sitting next to me here we we penciled this in a special little time devoted to denver's only food radio station i believe is that is that true well i don't know if it's a food radio station like but it. it's a radio station with a I food like show it. on it but thank you very much we appreciate that very much now listen scott i'm going to turn you you and brian loose in just a second but i want to say uh scott and jessica from field to fork have been a really big part of our summer dinner series and, and you know one of the most favorite farms for us to visit and get uh, organic produce so thank you so much for your donations uh, throughout uh, the summer dinner series and uh, on the show today Scott and Jessica we're talking a lot about vegetables we're grilling vegetables we're chopping vegetables with uh, Element Knife Company and Chef Elon Wenzel and so we kind of just want to get into a little bit about the season well, right Jay tell them what we have from Field to Fork here we've well, I don't got know you tell them I don't know we've got we some incredible nectarines that they grew that we are very special to get we have some of your little red torpedo onions mm. here as well um, and those torpedo, are always tasty. I remember the torpedo onions from the tour that we took, and they were digging them out. And as they dig things out of the soil right in front of you, not only is that magical, but I feel I'm, I'm paranoid that it's that it's they're doing it too soon just for the content purpose, you know. And they're like, ah, listen, we uh, one onion's okay. We'll we'll throw it back in the ground, and it'll be all right. But Scott, Jessica, tell uh, Brian, get into them about what what you're growing right now. What's coming out? What can we look forward to? Okay, well, first let's give Scott props because instead of saying you, they were pulling stuff out of the dirt, I said soil. Jay will always. I know. That's why I'm giving Scott props right now because he has burned it into your head that it you grow food in soil. And dirt is dead. Oh, okay. Right there, Scott? Dirt is the thing underneath your fingernails, and soil is the medium in which we grow our food. God, I'm glad I didn't say dirt then. I love well, it. Well, I love it, though. You, it, he left this on you forever. It's, it's a gift, man. It I, is a I, gift. Yes. Well, S talk about the gift. Scott, yeah, is. roll into Scott. I mean, listen, so I have here, I have your beautiful little gem lettuce. I have some, uh, like I said, some onions, some little gems, some nectarines. I'm, I'm waiting for your uh, tomatoes. I think we've seen a couple of them, but I want a lot more. So tell us, Scott and Jess, all the awesome things you've got growing out there. Guys, August, I'm sure you guys are aware, down in Denver, too, man. This is fruition. Um, we're at, you know, 13 hours of sunlight on the, on the downsloping side of, of our summer, and we're starting to see our 120-day crop. We've got some awesome melon and watermelon coming out right now, and we, uh, we put – a little shout out to Jared, the truck driver for Growers Organic. He's down there in the Denver metro area, man. Big props to the men and women who pass and cross that pass time and time again for all our convenience. Big, 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 big praise for all the truck drivers, men and women that make it happen for our convenient lifestyles. And uh, he took 100 pounds of our heirloom uh, tomatoes down to the warehouse. So those, yeah, yesterday it was Friday, Friday evening. So those, those are there. Um, sometimes, sometimes every once in a while is a compliment to the barbecue. We like to style a caprese salad. Um, for those of you guys, you guys want to illustrate a caprese salad, how you guys like it, or the main ingredient being tomatoes in that. Yep. Right now, I mean, and what are they? Jay, do you know what a caprese salad is? Uh, I don't. And I'll, and I'll just say this because I have a microphone. I'm not a big tomato guy. Oh, you know, really? Yeah, I'm really uh, not. And, and not to say that Field of Fork's not growing the best tomatoes on earth. You know, I mean, they are. But, you know, I'm just sharing a little bit about myself. Well, here's what I would ask. Okay, a long time ago, our tomato industry was ruined by a family that had this idea that they would pick the tomatoes green and ship them to the place that they would be sold, gas them in gassing rooms mm -hmm. to get the color on them. And so a long time ago, somebody ruined this for everybody because – tomatoes don't taste like they should mm -hmm. and then we took it a step farther and we started growing a bunch of tomatoes in hydroponic greenhouses and they weren't getting that precious soil the nutrients 
that everything gets out of the soil. And so that's one of the things why if you tasted, if you gave tomatoes another shot and tried one of Scott and Jess's tomatoes from Field to Fork, I think you might change your mind. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, and that, yeah. and, and that may be. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just. Well, and then we put tomatoes in refrigerators. And, Scott, w w tomatoes should never get cold, right? No, no. We, 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 like, we like our tomatoes just a bit just a bit chillier than room temperature, even as, as low as, or as high as, I should say, 45 degrees, 65 degrees, we can start to see, we'll make the tomato mealy. It literally will change the cell structure in that tomato. So tomatoes really don't like it cold, and they don't like it scaldering hot. They're, they're pretty sensitive after the, the harvest happens. They, they got to be we always, uh, the grower organic drivers, always wrap them in, like, quilted padded moving blankets because that inside cab temperature of, like, 37, maybe 34, 33, some peach growers like their peaches, is way too cold for a tomato. It'll make it mealy and, and, and turn it out. So, uh, I mean, even, even to go as far as I've, I've made one smaller, a very fragile tomatoes go out i'm like no you got an air ride seat here nobody's sitting in it i'm putting the five flats of tomatoes in the seat belt and it's going to ride right next to you it's just going to denver in the cab of the truck i love it yes and we store it the same way just so you know scott we share that love tomatoes in my warehouse will never get under 58 degrees because i i feel I that i mean yeah, no definitely your, your your facility is impressive. What? How many different climates and temperature and humidity you guys have there at our growers? It's again? insane. We have five different temperature zones and four different humidity zones. It's really insane. Wow. Nine. Uh, that's the voice of uh, Scott Washkowiak. Yes, Jessica, yeah. Oh. And, uh, and Jessica Washkowiak oh, in Palisade, Colorado, field to fork. With just a couple minutes left, uh, you guys, talk about uh, the vegetables that we can expect over the next, uh, you know, I don't know, month or two or what's wh – oh, is, there, is there anything that's not available now that will be available in a month? Yeah. Grilling and chilling, man. Once, once we shake the heat or at night, um, patty pan squash, it's an Asian version of your summer squash, but they just thin – they're circular with kind of a, a loose – serrated like ghost fringe around them they're awesome they come in yellow white kind of an off greeny white and the typical green boy when i slice those kind of patty style the flipping and the rotation is just so natural a lot like you would with a burger that romaine we have is awesome grilled um it, it, it's just this this time of year and the big thing about colorado and the west slope in the palisade area the warmest spot in our whole state is it goes on, man. It goes on until easily Thanksgiving. We, we are a four-season farm. Carrots are another thing we like to grill and chill with. When you, uh, Scott and, and Brian, you could probably answer this too. When you guys grow the same vegetable, only different colors of it, might be a dumb question, but does the fl flavor profile change with the different colors? Or, or what's, the, what's the purpose of having a yellow squash versus a green squash versus a purple squash? Go for it, Brian. I'll follow up. Well, I mean, one of it is, is a, it's really a lot of, of an aesthetic. There, but there, you've got to remember, you've got hundred plus varieties, if not way more, of squash in itself. So tonight, we have some, a couple of them from one of my friends out in California, because our squash just isn't. I've started to get some zucchini off the front range, not yet off of uh, Palisade, but so we have like a calabacita squash, which is a round squash. And it's just, it's different textures, Jay, all the way around. So it, you could, someone could say like this calabacita or an eight ball squash is like a zucchini that's just exploded into a globe. But it's really more about flavors and textures. So they are different. Every squash is going to be a little bit different. And Scott, you feed right off of that, please. Yeah, and the, the biggest thing I would deduct about squash in general, no matter the variety, color, or all that, is its maturity. Um, for any chefs out there, home chefs, which is even, you know, the other side, you get things younger. They tend to be nuttier and just way vibrant. And then, you know, you, you want to do something different. You go a little older. And, and from a grower's standpoint, the color is really, 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 it's obscure. For instance, most yellow squash, for some reason, for some scientific fact that no one is, is 
delved into the data with, they get less squash bugs. For I, I don't I don't know maybe maybe because it's they're less marketable than the green ones and everybody wants the green ones. I, I I don't know, but but we have found out time and time again, yellow squash just don't pick up those squash bug, bugs like the green squash does. So well, there's there's one thing as a grower we really notice. Well, I've got an interesting question around that, Scott. You know, because remember your predator colors are red, yellow, and black, I believe, right? Nice. Remember, so I wonder if that ties into that at all because those are if you look at your poisonous snakes or poisonous bugs, they're one of those yeah. one of those colors. Yeah. And I wonder if that ties in of why the other insects are afraid of those colors. Well, here's the thing. Uh, we'll get we'll get into insects and snakes and with the vegetables that they're afraid of and not afraid of <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> another time. Scott and Jessica, <laughs> I have to thank you for your time on the phone today. Field to Fork in Palisade, Colorado. And uh, just you guys are not only friends, but your family and your awesome farmers. You're doing everything the right way. And, uh, you know, a lot of people could could learn a lot from the way you guys are, are living your life on your farm. And I can't thank you enough. Yeah, I'm really, really stoked to be part of your growth. And it's so impressive of your willingness to learn. And uh, I, we, we feed off you, buddy. We we. We want to have uh, we want to have Jay Boot Camp out here. We want you to spend a good five day weekend with us, and we're going to just condition you to to love vegetables and, and live your life, guys. Any, any anybody down in the Denver area, go to www.fieldtoforkfarm.com. Check out our website. If you are in the greatest place in all of Colorado, say hi. Stop by. We have a farm stand and all that jazz. I had to get a little plug in there, guys. No, that's awesome. No, I mean, and say it again because you guys have a Facebook page and a website. It's fieldtofork.com on the website. Check out your Facebook, which is also Field to Fork CSA, I believe, isn't it? Fieldtoforkfarm.com. Yeah, fieldtoforkfarm.com. We're on Instagram and all all the other obvious media types, but... Good things, man. Good things. Lots of positive vibrations. And if you don't got food, you got nothing, gentlemen. Thank you, Scott and Jessica. We'll talk to you guys real soon. You guys, thank you for all that you do. Our Palisade farmers out there, it's yeah. a huge, huge thing. We got to support them, man. That's right. And we have to support them, and we have to support our other sponsors, which means we have to take a break. And so uh, we'll be right back. We're going to talk to, I think, Chef Christopher Moore and Chef Andre Joseph, and we're going to talk vegetables and uh, Proud Souls Yoder Smoker and how you can smoke some vegetables. And then we're going to get into meat and more vegetables. It's meat, vegetables, it's grilling. It's the Modern Eater Show. You're listening to us on iHeartRadio. Hey, thanks, Jay. And you know us in Colorado, we smoke anything and everything. Hey, I'm here with <laughs> I'm here with Todd, the biggest guy in the salsa business. Uh, you know, as I make chips, he makes salsa for Ready Foods. Um, secret of many chefs. You should see this salsa. Hold on, before I ask you any questions, you guys have got to see this salsa. It's loaded with all kinds of vegetables. Tell me about this, Todd. Well, this is a, uh, we're calling it a salsa asada. And it is a fire-roasted vegetable salsa, uh, mostly fire-roasted tomatillos. It also has three peppers in it. Uh, it they are, uh, sorry, uh, uh, jalapenos, chili de arbol. Oh, my and, God. And it, uh, poblanos. It, it's beautiful. And this is available. You can get this just like it is here, right from the distributor, right just out. From your local distributor here in Colorado? Ready Foods, I'll tell you what, second generation, great family, Colorado family, great products, safe. They can make all you need. These are the guys, if you're running behind in your kitchen, these are the guys to reach out to. Yes. Ready? So, Todd, how do we get a hold of you? What's your uh, cell? 720-308-5992. Awesome. Give Todd a call. He will help you. Thanks. We'll be right back. Pizza and Tap right here in Denver, Colorado. With your help, let's make pizza great again. Come into Crush Pizza and Tap for our award-winning pizza, wings, and local beer. But we're serving up three styles of pizza for you to crush. Dig into our Chicago deep dish with sauce on top of the cornmeal crust. And don't forget about our Sicilian, that's right, with cheesy crisp edges and that soft, soft crust. Don't forget about America's pizza. How could you do that? Crush Pizza and Taps hand-tossed pizza will take your taste buds back, back, back to that neighborhood pizzeria you loved as a kid. You like deals? Come in and mention The Modern Eater and get a buy one, get one free on our hand-tossed pizzas any day of the week. Man, that's good. Lastly, don't forget to crush our award-winning smoked wings. They're a little rich approved and loved by everyone. 
Crush Pizza and Taps conveniently located at 1200 West 38th Avenue, just minutes from downtown. Come and crush pizza with us. We've been making pizza great again since 2012. It's Crush Pizza and Tap. Colleen Ferreira here with the Colorado Chefs Association. You've probably heard the excitement. This year we are creating a stir in the culinary community. This is your personal invitation to join us on our constant culinary adventure. Let us open up our network to you and help you grow professionally. Whether you are a chef, purveyor, brewer, baker, we are here to build your brand, your business, and connect you with Colorado's culinary community. Join us. I'd love to hear from you. Email me, Colleen, at acfcoloradochefs.org. Want to bake the best? Bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas and the Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open, yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom grains like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love our... I'm going to hit this live right here really quick. Best, you must use the best. Learn more at ardentmills.com. Listen up, barbecue lovers. Greg Holland back here for Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Proud Souls is Denver's authority of all things barbecue. So, yeah, we're coming back after this in uh, 50 seconds. Beginners to pitmasters, Proud Souls has all the equipment you could possibly want. A variety of wood, pellet, and charcoal grills and smokers. Award-winning pitmasters and owners of Proud Souls, Dan and Tony, have a passion for barbecue, and it shows. Located on 25th and Federal, Proud Souls retail store is bursting at the seams with your barbecuing essentials, the Spice Guy spices, and superior flavored fuels for your pit like hickory, mesquite, oak, pecan, cherry, apple, peach, maple, grape in a variety of blends. Hit their website, ProudSoulsBBQ.com for delicious hands-on barbecue classes and get information on current promotions and deals. For the best in barbecue, locally owned and operated on... All right, coming back. There are guys. Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. That's ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> this is Justin Brunson, Culture Meat and Cheese in Denver Central Market. I'm a meat guy. <laughs> and you're listening to the Modern Eater Show iHeartRadio. Yes, you are. Thank you for tuning in. Jay Parker here. Greg Hollenbeck is out. Brian Freeman, Growers Organic. Uh, down the line, Christopher Moore, Andre Joseph, Chef Elin Wenzel. Well, there are everybody's chefs over there on that <laughs> side. Coming up, we still have Proud Souls. We're going to cut a brisket. We're going to cut a pork. What is it? A pork what? Bone-in pork loin. We're going to cut a bone-in pork loin, and we're going to talk about Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions and how you can learn how to barbecue uh, like the best, like they do. But until we get to them, I'm going to talk to uh, Brian Freeman about vegetables. And you guys are all three chefs, and tis the season for vegetables. I don't like vegetables. And in well, a lot of, you know, <laughs> listen, a lot of people don't. But and, only and, you but, don't, Jay. Lots but the, of people like vegetables. No, I, I love like vegetables. little kids don't like broccoli, no. but they're just little. I love vegetables too. But the point is, is that there's a lot of different different ways to eat vegetables, and uh, a lot of people, myself included, before this show and meeting everybody that I meet through it, don't think about grilling vegetables. I don't think about that. That's not a thing in my brain, right? I, However, it's a, it's a real thing that it can benefit you uh, in, a, in a million different ways. So all that being said, I'm going to shut up, and I want Brian Freeman and the chefs to talk about vegetables what are the good ones to grill what are you know cruddy ones to grill and and but do this though give me five to ten seconds about who you are and where you work because i don't even know who this right. guy is all right uh christopher moore degree metropolitan food and drink i've been on the show many times uh let me tell you uh sunday afternoon sunday for my me and my family is uh go to church and then it's like basically do nothing day and then we have early dinner which is during the summer we we grill and then we grill corn we grow uh, carrots, zucchini, we grow squashes, we grow mushrooms, we grow onions. And we basically took all of that and turned it all into either we make tacos out of it with corn tortillas coming from actually from Rich's Racoletas tortillas. Uh -huh. Or uh, we just we put it over rice and my wife makes some uh, Guatemalan chimol, which is uh, like a stewed pico de gallo. Um, amazing. And it's really fun. And for my son is eight years old and he loves to grill that is like his favorite thing to actually watch the stuff cook and, and then he knows the flavors of what goes on there what's a vegetable that you don't like to grill it doesn't hold up it's not fun you're like i'll pass on this i don't you know honestly i don't you know tomatoes unless yeah, tomato, tomatoes. tomatoes will usually fall apart unless you 
it's quick, high heat sear, and then pull it off because tomatoes are inherently high water content. Now, if no, I could no just good. interject real quick, sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Yeah. The way to grill tomatoes, if you're going to do it, don't slice them and throw, throw them on the grill to eat them as grilled. Put them on the grill whole, char them, yep. get yes. the skins nice and black, and then you can utilize that for a charred tomato sauce or soup, something to that. Good and man. I agree Good because man. I've, I've actually, I've, I have cooks it who, when we're doing like grilled, grilled vegetables at work, they'll, they'll butcher peppers. And I'm like, why would you not just grill that thing whole and get a good char on the outside and then just cut it up from That's there? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Right? Mm. Well, so. I love that. And so you were hearing right there from Chef Christopher Moore and Chef Elon Wenzel. Now let's hear from Chef right here. Andre Help me up Joseph. again, Andre. Thank you so much. You, your, your chef's coat was bending over there a little bit. Beautiful. Andre, where are you from? Where are you about? So I'm from Jamaica originally. Nice, here, nice. No one hates that in Colorado. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But um, I'm originally from Jamaica, though, and I am currently with the Children's Hospital of Colorado. Nice. Um, nice. I was at the Source Hotel, but then I left, you know. But carrying on on the question about the vegetables and all that stuff, I don't really like vegetables. <laughs> but I will boil them and then use them as uh, either a Slurpee or a slushy or something, you know. I won't eat it okay. whole. But I'll just drink it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you no. want to get those in your body. He knows oh, yeah. that they're good for him. This is very different from Jay Parker because Jay Parker would just stay away from it altogether. But he's going to blend it up. I love that. And, I mean, Jay, you eat smoothies? Well, Jay, I don't know tell where him this, about uh, your breakfast. I, I still tell like, Brian about your breakfast. I don't know where this weird thing comes from that I don't like vegetables, you know? Well, I you mean, just told the whole, like, three million no, people that are listening. But no, I think I, you said that. I didn't <laughs> say that I didn't like it. I mean, I love vegetables, you know? I mean, now I do. Uh, we're not going to get into my diet, Dave, but <laughs> but <laughs> it is interesting. I'll give you that. Catch me when we're not doing the show, and we'll, we'll talk about my diet a little bit more. Um, okay. Sh well, we need to Jamaica. jump back to Andre because, yeah, what, what produce in, in Jamaica is, like, something special for you? Because, you know, you've got, like, Cuba. They're yeah. eating plantains. Yeah. What are you eating in Jamaica? So we have plantains in Jamaica, too. Okay. We also have the sweet peppers. We have um, sweet potatoes and all that stuff. And um, what's that one called? I think it's called Sour Stop. You ever heard of that one? I have. Yeah. yeah so we use all of those and we make drink with them. We use it to make, like, um, mm. salads. We use it to make sauces and all that stuff in Jamaica, yeah. Okay, I love this. Well, because a lot of people don't know that one of the famous, famous spices and spice mixes, I should say, and I wish our guy was here from the Spice Guy, yeah. our friend over at the Spice Guy, yeah, but Zach. Zach, but the reality is, is where there's a Jamaican jerk rub that has put you guys on the map and as far yeah. as spices are concerned. Yeah. And, and you use a lot of that on your, on your meats, right? That's more of a meat rub. So it's more of like a red meat rub, but it can be used on poultry and seafood too, but it's very strong. It's very acidic, it's very spicy, and it has a lot of alkaline in it from some of the ingredients that we use. So we tend to put it more on meats like um, lamb, um, beef. We don't have deers in Jamaica though, but we just <laughs> use lamb, beef, and some people use it on rabbit too, because we have jerk rabbit and all that stuff. Wow. What, what kinds that's of food good. did you grow up with? I'm just curious, because that's something I'd be interested in so i grew up with a lot of curry a lot of chicken stews and we grew up with a lot of fish a lot of seafood because you know jamaica is an island and we are surrounded by the water so we'd have friends who go out by the sea and they catch fish and we they come home we put it in banana leaf we roast it we put it in um soups like we call it a fish tea that's what we call it in jamaica it's done a tea though but that's what we call it in jamaica we use awesome. it, we, we put it. <laughs> you, let me ask you this yeah. let me jump in here how much grilling do you guys do in Jamaica? We do a lot of grilling in you Jamaica. You do a lot of grilling? Do you do, is it wood, charcoal, gas? What do you like to use out there? So in Jamaica, we do a lot of wood. We do a lot of pimento wood, cinnamon wood, and we do um, any wood that gives you flavor like um, cider wood, uh, mahogany, and all that stuff. Uh -huh. We put it in the grill. We flame it, cover it. Then when it starts to smoke, then you throw your meat on. Then it absorbs the flavor and the scent and all that stuff. Were you getting down a little bit over there with the Proud Souls Yoder smoker? Did you, did, did, have, you, have you ever used a Yoder smoker before or the Big Green Egg over here? You ever got down with those? I've never used this before. You've never used it, before? Used it before? Are you excited? I That's think we're going to make you do something over there. I think Chef Chris, he's, he's a lunatic. He's always making people I'm, cook yeah, in here. No, no. It's, so you know, he's, he's going to do I something. Call it, I, call it, I call it reckless cooking because there's no parameters. But it's a lot of fun because I'm using equipment that I've never used before. And I get to come experience and use it here because I'm talking to these guys from Proud Souls about actually 
what you know what does it take to get a, a green egg and can it be put into a commercial application or residential application and it's funny because he's talking about grilling and stuff in jamaica and i'm picturing bonfire on a beach uh all sorts of wood underneath it and banana banana leaf wrapped fish on top of that and that's that's an afternoon right there okay. yeah. well right? It's, it's funny because when you think about jamaica and and, and i've never been to jamaica you right but I. here in the states and and how we think when he describes yeah when he describes how he's cooking with fish i don't i mean that you think of the whole island of jamaica as nobody has a shirt on everybody's <laughs> on the beach there's no cars or electricity it's just everybody out doing you know th- right. and that's not how it is obviously well, but you totally that's forgot the picture the in your head Jay. The you run, forgot well, a I'm glass s- of rum. I'm, 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 I'm sober, so you know, <laughs> that, that, there you go. You're like a rum. We've got to talk about rum. Uh, listen, we're going to take a break, but I want to thank Chef Christopher Moore and Chef Absolutely. Andre Joseph and Chef Elon Wenzel for, for uh, taking the time to talk vegetables with us. Now we're going to we're good. This is called a shift, and so we're shifting a little bit away from vegetables and a little bit towards pork and beef and, uh, you know, the animal side of things. And we're going to do that with Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions and Chris Webb and Tony Roberts. And uh, Chris Webb is going to cut up a brisket that's from Owlbear. I mentioned Owlbear earlier. Earlier, Owlbear Barbecue has won multiple awards, and I even did some homework so I can impress him, but he's not here, so <laughs> that goes to waste. But we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to learn how to cut up a brisket and why. We're going to get into a, a bone-in pork loin. We're going to get into a barbecue class over at, barbecue, over at uh, Proud Souls Barbecue and provisions and find out how you can barbecue with the best of them so that's what we're going to do when we come back you're listening to the modern eater show on iHeartRadio. hey and keep listening keep listening hey i just had a big piece of a big chunk of brisket delicious oh my god incredible al Al did a great job just had some of todd's salsa that salsa out of the bottle Unbelievable, Unbelievable that you can open it and just and, and be ready to go so i've got my great friend paul here paul's one of the top chefs in the state has been for five ten years eternity we'll, we'll say eternity in that's this really industry long. that's a that's, that's a long, long ride time, long time. so where are you at these days university of colorado south denver executive chef the guy. working there first time down here to the studio kitchen love the place thought it was bigger than usual well you but know it's beautiful in here people tell say that about me too they're you going are beautiful, you, you seem to, no 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 small, no. Little small <laughs> but you're beautiful you're beautiful <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming down. Now, uh, at CU, how many people a day are you feeding? Or well, pretty CU much South? we're doing, we did about 55, 60,000 people come through our door last year. Oh, my God. About three and a half, four million dollars in catering we do down in South Denver. This is the man. Very involved ACF. All things food, all things Colorado. This is the guy. We're going to get Rich. you. I want you to come down and cook for us. We're going to come down there and cook. We're going to try some of this brisket. Oh, that'll be awesome. Hey, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, that was awesome. That, that was it. Thanks, Rick. That was easy, huh? All right, good for me. Because you've eliminated gluten from your diet. Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you that you can add breads, pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply delicious. The bakery is located in Arvada on 64th and Sims across the street from Arvada West High School. Check out their website at glutenfreethings.com. You'll be amazed with the variety of gluten-free products they make. And chefs, don't leave your gluten-free restaurant guests without options. Contact John at info at glutenfreethings.com. That's info at glutenfreethings.com to see what he can do for you. Give him a shot. 11651 West 64th Avenue in our... Live in about a minute. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalita's Tortillas. Rockalita's, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, 
then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get Ten. Conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303-460-4673. You're hot. Back to the show in just a second, but before we do that, we have to talk about our friend Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, he's a family guy, Brian. What he does is he installs and maintains tap lines. He just did a huge job up at Monarch Casino. Beautiful. Anybody knows that if, if, if you're seeing foam come out of your tap, if, you're, if it's not the right temperature, if, if there's something off, you call Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solution. His phone number is 720-272-3809. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Say that again. I got to get a pen. It's 720-272-3809. He does specialty taps. If, if you need coffee, water, wine, obviously beer. Kombucha? Nitro. Kombucha. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions is the guy to call. Punchbowl Social flies this guy around the country to install their tap lines. You don't do that unless you know what, what you're doing because guess what? These other parts of the country, they have tap guys too, but they don't have it like, uh, like we do here in Denver. But, Jay, if Rourke. somebody screwed up my tap lines, can Jeff Rourke fix it? Yes, he can. And uh, if he, along those lines of fixing stuff, if you are pouring inefficient beer, what are you doing, Brian? You're pouring, pouring your, your money, money down the drain. That's right. Don't pour your money down the drain, you guys. You call Jeff Rourke. Just call Jeff, 720-272-3809. That's A-plus beverage solution, 720-272-3809. Jeff Rourke and A-plus beverage solutions. Feed me now. This is the Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy. I'm starving. And now it's time for In the Kitchen. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Brought to you by Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. You're hot. I know. Well, 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 back here at the Modern Eater Studio Kitchen, Colorado. It's Saturday night in the Rocky Mountains. We're pushing on 7 o'clock, but we got to tell you about something. We're right in the middle of grilling season. This is the time of year when you want to be outside with your friends around a grill, holding a cold one mm -hmm. of any kind, mm -hmm. looking at something that's about to go on. Maybe it's 500 degrees. Maybe it's this green egg that we have in here that can get up to 800 degrees and can sear anything instantly. But you want to be in your backyard. Oh, wait, maybe you want a smoker too. And they have the Yoder smokers. They have probably like five different kinds of smokers well, let's that are all get, high end. Let me. you're talking about. I'm talking about Proud Souls <laughs> Barbecue. 25th and federal. And who's this guy? This guy right here. Well, who is this guy? <laughs> this guy probably knows more about barbecues and smokers than anyone in the state. His name, Tony Roberts of Proud Souls Barbecues and Provisions. Check him out, but listen to what he has to say right here today. What up, fellows? How's it going? <laughs> Good, Tony. How are you yeah. doing? Thanks for coming Great. out to yeah. the show tonight. Now, in front of you, you have a piece of brisket. I do. Right? Ha I do have a brisket. Tony yeah. Roberts from Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. All your one-stop shop for everything barbecue. Uh, Owl Bear, the guy who was over at Owl Bear, Carl was yep, supposed Carl. to be on. Yep. He couldn't make it. Restaurant business, we know how that is. But he gave us this brisket, yep. right? And so we're going to talk to Tony. We're going to talk to Chris Webb about uh, grilling. Not only meats, we're going to get into vegetables a little bit because it's that time of the well, season, Well, wait, too. what tastes better with a steak than a potato? Come That's on right. now. Or Thank some broccoli. Yep. <laughs> but with this brisket you have in front of you, Tony, tell us how it was cooked, right? Because it's cooked and ready to rock and roll. Tell us kind of how uh, Carl over there at Albert, who's one of your faithful regulars, how he put it together and then, and then slice that bad boy up and tell us what you're doing. Yeah, so, so first of all, I will say Carl at Albert, Texas-style barbecue, right? So uh, full packer brisket we have here. This probably started out at somewhere around uh, 11, 12 pounds. As they cook down, they'll, they'll shrink a little bit. Um, Carl does a great job down there. So if anyone's ever interested in trying some Texas-style barbecue, Kyle or Carl down in, in, in Rhino does an excellent job at that. The first thing I, I noticed with this brisket that, that he cooked, 
Um, beautiful bark, right? Uh, salt, pepper, probably some garlic notes in this. Everything that accentuates a beefy flavor. Um, the next thing I notice is just how it's cooked. I mean, look at this thing. You call it the jiggle, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the where's the uh, where's the camera right, right here? Yeah, camera, down camera. On, on. There you that go. That jiggle. That's, uh, jiggle. that's that's when you know brisket's done right, right? It should melt in your mouth. Uh, a lot of pe a lot of mistakes uh, backyard cooks make with brisket in particular is they don't cook it long enough, right? It never gets that jiggle. The other thing you're going to want to look at is fat. I can see right here. See this fat? That's our friend in brisket cooking, right? Flavor components, moisture, everything we need to make a, a beautiful bite of beef. Um, we have a fatty end. This is the point of the brisket, um, which Carl will tell you if you ever go to a, a Texas uh, restaurant, which he does in his place, you can ask for at the counter a slice of fatty or a slice of lean. Your point right here is the lean. So the lean's not going to have the same sort of marbling in it, uh, not as much fat. Um, and the striations run differently. So another thing we like to tell folks that come uh, to our store and what we teach in our classes is find the grain of the brisket. So you can see how the grain is running here on this fatty end and then cut against the grain. So you always want to cut against the grain on, on a brisket. Look and you can that. see this just start falling apart. So Carl and his team did an awesome wow. job on, on this. But the... The final test, in my opinion, is always the, the bend test, the finger test. You hold that. it up like that. Oh, my goodness. Now, let, it, me, let me ask you this. So how, what was that cooked in, most likely, or, or how could you cook it? Yep. So you can cook it a lot of ways. I know Carl uses a traditional Texas offset smoker. He has a firebox on one side and a cooking chamber on the other. The firebox provides the heat. It's transferred to the cooking chamber and then out of the chimney stack. So my guess is Carl probably cooked this somewhere around 250 degrees. Um, a brisket this size would probably take him at 250, somewhere around 6, 7, maybe maybe 8 hours, depending on, on what he's running. So um, low and slow. Low, low slow, and, and long. Low and slow, long. Um, traditional Texas barbecue is cooked over oak wood. Uh, sometimes folks utilize mesquite. Mesquite has a very heavy smoke flavor. I personally prefer an oak. It's a little bit more mellow. The the smoke is there to accentuate the meat, but it won't o overpower the beef itself. So I can see Brian over here is already kind of. <laughs> I, I would say it would Eyeball. sound weird, Tony, yeah. if I wanted to invite you home and only you have to bring the brisket. Is that weird? or uh, no, no. You know, come home with me tonight, but bring your brisket, sweetheart. And bring your brisket. Um. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can see here how this is slicing up. Beautiful um, marbling in here. Oh. Um, nice fatty content. I'm just going to start plating this up. So we'll do some fatty slices on one side. And then I'm not sure exactly how Carl likes to serve it, but I'll also go down to the lean. The lean, you can see here, um, follow your grain, folks. So you can see your, your two muscle groups here in the, in the brisket, your point and your flat. Um, your grains run in opposite directions. So I'm going to go down here to the lean now and start taking some slices off of this, off of this lean cut. And you can see here, so this is something that traditionally would be served on, on a platter. Um, some folks where I grew up in, in, in Missouri, make sandwiches out of this. So we'll put the, start putting the lean over here. But excellent brisket, cooked just right. Um, my guess is this is a, a prime grade brisket, but you can see, see the wow. smoke ring there. Wow. Um, Look at very, that. Very well, very well. Tony, that, that is amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, taste it. Yeah, Brian, <laughs> get in on that. I can't, I can't. Well, eat the right thing now is, is this is, a, this is like the. You, what, you, okay, yeah, go right ahead, please. Jared, how much time we have before we're breaking, buddy? I want to keep my heart healthy, so I get my. Sorry, I, did you guys not hear me? <laughs> no, I couldn't oh, hear you. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, when you, when if you, if you need to talk to me, can you? I'm, I'm a little deaf in my left ear. Can you just kind of yell in that thing? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, brother. A leek tablet is equal to a whole clove of garlic, except it's odor free. All right, another great segment. Holy cow, I want to go get me some of that. That brisket. Oh, Brian, rub it in. Rub it in. I hope we're making some tacos out of that. Hey, I've got my buddy Jonathan Shikes. Yep. Here, Jonathan, I'm going to give you a mic. I'm going to have you hold it right there. Awesome. Right there. Jonathan's a pretty famous guy. If you're a beer lover, beer drinker, uh, have anything to do with beer, you know this guy. And why would we know you, Jonathan? Well, I've been writing about beer in Denver for going on 12 years. Uh, I uh, started when I was the managing editor at Westward, and uh, writing about beer uh, has been great. I, I, 
you know, the beer scene exploded here, and uh, I uh, was uh, was in it just at the right time. Well, you know, when you're in a position of the westward, because, I mean, you know, everybody reads it. Everyone looks to them for uh, guidance and what's cool, what's happening and stuff, like we're hoping they do here. But, I mean, my gosh, you, you really, I would say, you've probably impacted craft beer in this state. Safe to say. Well, I mean, it's possible that I have, uh, but I think more, more, you know, I think all of this, everything that happened, being able to write about it uh, is, you know, the, that, the most impactful thing are the people who run all these different businesses, and I've just been happy to be able to write about all of them. Uh, it's, it's sort of fascinating watching the cycle of, of business life for the last 10 years for these breweries, but uh, it's been a blast. Yeah, it's been definitely a, a, a huge cycle. Now, let me ask you, when you're writing about the beer, do you, let, let's say you go to a brewery. Are you writing about the beer or the the theater there, the food? What what piques your interest there? The, the majority of what I write about, I write about trends, uh, whether it's business trends or style trends. Uh, I like to write about all the openings and closings that are going on. Uh, I try to write a little bit about the personalities uh, who are behind the beers, but I really like writing about the, the different things that happen. And, and every single day, every week, every month, every year, there are new things that I that nobody could predict, uh, whether it's uh, the, the life cycle of these businesses, what's popular and what isn't, or what, uh, what styles are popular and what aren't. So yep. I, I like covering all of that. Well, like right now, and, and sadly, I'm not even a drinker, so I'm kind of the ignorant guy asking you a couple questions. But a uh, question, what's, what is hot right now? Um, right now, I mean, from a style perspective, uh -huh. New England, New England uh, hazy, style, hazy beers have been in for, for a while. Right now, uh, seltzers, which are, are really big, they're considered, yes. they're considered beer. Uh, breweries are having to decide whether they want to go down that road and make seltzers or whether they just want to stick with, with regular beer. But that's what, that's what everyone's talking about from a style perspective. From a business perspective, breweries expanding. Uh, some, are, some are trying to open second locations. Um, others are closing, consolidating, or buying each other out. So that's what's going on from, from that perspective. Well, it's challenging. I think as you, you open up a brewery, uh, you have your tap room, and then that next step is, okay, I want to get into distribution. I want to start getting into all these different things. There are many obstacles in the way. Yeah. And they, they cost a lot of money. There's a big learning curve there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of breweries right now don't want to get into distribution, and they're the ones who I think are having the, the most success at the moment because they, if they can be a corner brewery, a neighborhood brewery, uh, they're going to have they're gonna have a lot of success if they're, in, if they're in the right place. The ones that want to package, uh, they're, they're, they're having more trouble because the competition for shelf space, for kegs, for uh, tap handles, that's really tough right now. Very, very much so. So what you're seeing is kind of like uh, more of that neighborhood feel where they get that, they become part of the community. Um, they probably know 80% of the people that walk in the door. They're very specific to that area. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, it's kind of like the, the corner bar uh, or, you know, dive bars. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, Irish pubs were, were big for a long time, and it was yeah. where people in different neighborhoods, and there's so many great neighborhoods in Denver, uh, the, the claim bars or, or places they want to be. And that right now, it's breweries. Breweries have kind of taken over as the place to meet, the place to go to, the place where you run into your neighbors, you see your friends, you see the same people over and over again. You can talk to the owner, you can talk to the brewer if they're small enough. And it's a real, you know, it, it really, I think it brings people a lot of joy uh, to have a place like that where they can go. I agree. How about ingredient trends? Are you seeing anything there, like special types of... Uh, barley's hops, local, uh, maybe from other regions of the of the United States. What do you see happening there? You know, from a, a malted barley perspective, um, uh, there is a lot of local right now. There, there are uh, some real small uh, craft maltsters mm -hmm. that uh, have started up in Colorado, and they're trying to. They're selling. I think they're selling as much as they can make because breweries want to be local. Uh, so that that's definitely a big trend. They're also trying to get the word out there because the the real star in, in for beer is is the hops. That's what people talk about the most. But malt is is equally as important. Um, from a hops perspective, boy, there's so many. They're they're experimenting with new varieties all the time, uh, constantly introducing new ones. And um, I think the brewers are having a lot of fun with the the different flavor profiles that go along there. It's amazing. I mean, we're even seeing one uh, Liberati doing yep. a beer and wine. Yep, blend. 
Yeah, they're amazing. Liberati is a fantastic, uh, fantastic brew Great with that place blend. For lunch. Yep. Yeah. Oh my Terrific god, that's spot. awesome. Yep. Sounds like a commercial for Liberati. It isn't, but if you haven't been there, go check that out. Yeah, well, sure. thank you, Jonathan. I don't want to keep you much. I know you're going to be coming up on the table here pretty soon. Thanks for coming down. Please come down and see us again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And keep your eyes open on Westward for this guy. We'll be right. Broncos fans, sign up for the Broncos Fit 7K on Sunday, September 1st. The run walk takes participants through the Sloan's Lake neighborhood and finishes on the 50-yard line at Broncos Stadium at Mile High. All participants will receive a Broncos 60th Anniversary Finishers Medal, a historical t-shirt, and post-race entry into the Broncos Fit Expo with players, cheerleaders, and Miles the mascot. Go to Broncos7K.com and register now. Ask Alexa to play 630K How on iHeartRadio. Then you can hear a Fox News update on the hour. Getting 630K How from iHeartRadio. If Denver's talking about it, you'll hear it on 630K How. The following is a paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of KHOW, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. I'm out of my tweet. It's time for the second course, hour number two of The Modern Eater. What are you hungry for? Here's to a meal we're all here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Free. You're up. We are back to the show here at Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Greg Hollenbach is out. And the two gentlemen I see before me are Chris Webb and Tony Roberts from Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. And we just cut up a brisket from Owlbear Barbecue. Talked about uh, how you're cutting it, why you're cutting it that way, how long you're supposed to cook it, you know, uh, actually, and, and, and what you're cooking it in. You can find all of this information at ProudSoulsBBQ.com. And if you're somebody who's into barbecuing, whether it's meat or veggies, whether it's a drum smoker or a yoder smoker or a big green egg, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions on 25th and Federal is where you want to be. Start talking and then we'll do it. And, you know, well, live, that was where Greg would say live, and live radio. We'll yeah, start talking you know. and then we'll do it. Uh, we are talking, Chris Webb, but, but thank you. And I thought I was going to have a pork loin in front, but... I like the suspense, so you see an empty cutting board, but what's going to be on that cutting board in just a second? I hope it's a pork loin. No, just kidding. <laughs> nah, so we, uh, what we did today at the shop um, for everybody, so what we did, we had a Yoder smoker, right? Mm-hmm. Cooked this thing low and slow. So what we did was everybody thinks, like, who likes baby back ribs, right? I, right? So mm-hmm. what you're going to have tonight is kind of the best of both worlds. So I like pork loin. I like baby back ribs. You're having that all in one. So what this is is it's just a bone-in pork loin. So depending on how we cut it, we can eat the rib, or you can also eat it as a pork chop. Um, so that's what a baby back rib is. It's actually a loin back rib. Um, so once we pull this thing out and we kill the suspense, it'll all make sense. Uh, so we smoked it today at about, what, 225, 200 or yep. so, yep. low and slow. Yep. Um, cooked it for probably about an hour, 45 minutes, super low. We just want to infuse that smoke. So what we did was we used pecan today um, with a little bit of apple. We used some honey chipotle rub. Uh, We made a homemade vinegar-based barbecue sauce, which is thin. It pairs well with pork. Um, And we like to introduce a little bit of fruit, which is why we went ahead and went with the apple pellet. Oh, my Wow, this goodness. sounds so good. Yeah, yeah, listen, I, just listening to it. Yes, just, Free, Freeman, I, not to knock vegetables or anything, but, yeah, I mean, it's tough to compete with that kind of talk when you're, you're, when you're in the vegetable <laughs> world. I'm not saying anything. I, and I love organic hey produce. Hey, man, if and you I, like a big piece of meat, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm okay saying, with it, babe. It's good. It's like that when, when, when I saw Tony and he's cutting up that brisket and he's describing what he's doing and you smell it and you see it and everything else, that's when you go like, in, inside of your brain, you go, listen, I'm not saying that vegans are wrong, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're wrong because you're totally entitled to your opinion and everything. But there's, there's something a little wrong about not enjoying this. You, you know well, what I mean? Well, but then and take it a step farther because you're not even talking about all the raw food people who, do, who won't even eat it cooked. So yeah. there's a whole other world. But I got a question for you, Jay, because I was watching you watch Tony. Mm-hmm. And most important, I was watching you watch Chris. Because the deal is, is I, I couldn't tell if you were watching him cut the meat or you were watching him. Because our ratings spike on Facebook every time Chris gets up there. Uh, we we want to put Chris up in a muscle shirt yeah. right up there just slicing meat. Because all the girls, 
come to the website every time Chris is likes. here, man. Those likes. <laughs> Greg and I talk about how much we hate Chris all the time. Yeah. And it's all based on a jealousy, which I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit. <laughs> so here is this pork loin, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're, if you're listening to us on, on iHeartRadio 630 K-How, oh, yeah, yeah, go, to, go to the Modern Eater Facebook page and take <laughs> a look at this pork Boomerang, loin. right? Boomerang. Oh, my gosh. Forget about it. So, uh, Chris, just tell yeah. us what we're looking at, man. So this is what we're talking about, right? So this is a whole loin. So everybody's had, like, a pork loin. So it looks very similar to this right here. So this is what you would get whenever you actually go to the grocery store. And usually they come in a two-pack. This would be considered a whole loin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what we talked about with the baby backs, does that look familiar, guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. The arched mm-hmm. bone. Ribs. Ribs are a little bit curved. So that's the difference between like a St. Louis rib versus a baby back, right? This comes from a different part of the actual pig. Um, so these are a little bit more sensitive. So what we did today, like we talked about how we smoked it, then we brought it here. We blasted it on that Yoder flat top um, just to get a little bit of color. Finish cooking it internally, right? Um, so what we like to do, we like our pork uh, medium rare. Um, so 145-ish, it comes with a juicier because, you know, a loin, if overcooked, can be dry. So, and, I, and I think that's one of the bigger misconceptions in barbecue with, with folks that cook pork and loins in particular is that a medium rare is perfectly fine. I think the, the folks from, you know, um, the pork producers in the world have tried to promote that more. Like, you, you don't have to cook pork to 180, 190, you know, from a, a safety standpoint. I think pork loin in this particular reason and when chris cuts it open you'll see a nice medium rare it should be pink right yes that's the moisture i mean that's that's what's going to provide the best bite we always think about best bites and barbecue and overcooking pork is something that i think a, a backyard cook tend to, tends to ten, tends to do more often than not let me ask you a deep question though real quick jay um about that is is a lot of people you know we we were brought up in this whole thing of if it's not white, and, and maybe it was what the pork industry did to themselves. Yep. Because they promoted this, the other white meat. And it's really not. Good pork is red. It is. I mean, it and, should be red. It yeah. Be and so and do, do you think that they maybe did that to themselves? Because they kept talking about you want it white, so everyone, to get it white, you got to cook it until it's dry. I'm, am, I'm amazed at how many people come into our store every day and say they don't like pork chops or pork loins because when they were growing up as a kid, their mom or grandfather or, or whoever it was happened to cook it, and it was always dry to them. I said, well, it, it wasn't the pork. It was the cook. And that's no offense to anybody, but that's how, you know, 20 years ago, you know, the pork producers in the world were telling people how to, to cook the pork. I think nowadays, as people are more educated and understand food, um, cooking it to a medium rare like, like we did today with a nice pink and, you know, retaining moisture uh, is, is, is critical. And what makes a pork loin bone in like we have today, you can see Chris cutting this up, um, so flavorful and, and delicious. Now, let me, I'll, I'll admit this 100%. Like, I'm intimidated, right? Not, not only by Chris's size because he could just beat the life out of me, but, <laughs> but, 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 but that's not what I'm intimidated about, right? I, but, so I'm intimidated by just this piece of meat, right? And so, sure. it, and so you're saying, like, well, this is what I did to it, and I put some rubs on there, and I put this on there, and then I cooked it like that. So, that. so what would you yeah. guys suggest to a guy like me that, that is intimidated by this, pork loin because I look at it and go, man, this guy's a professional. You know, obviously if I'm going to ask somebody how to do it, I'm going to ask you guys at Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, but how is it, how can you help me be more approachable to like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot at buying a pork loin and putting it on my Yoder and actually doing what these guys can do. Right. I think the, the, the awesome thing about, this is one of the easiest things to cook, believe it or not. And they're super affordable, right? Mm-hmm. They feed a little bit, goes a long way. You know what I mean? So if you're having a dinner party at home and you want to cook something, you want to feed a lot of people, this is an awesome way. That's amazing. <laughs> um, it's an awesome way to feed a lot of people with a little bit of money, right? So you can, whether you, even if you don't have a smoker, you can put it in your oven, bring it up par way, and then sear it off on a, on a griddle of some sort, a cast iron, just to g- get a little bit of crust. So it's almost treated like a, like a whole uh, beef tenderloin. On the outside edges, it'll be a little bit more done for your, your dinner guests that might want it a little bit more white, right? But as we get inside the middle, um, now it begins to look uh, much more like this, which is what I want. Right. I'll tell you something, Brian. 
just ate a piece of that, which is <laughs> rare because normally I, 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 I don't eat during the you, show, yeah. and, and it's like, and it's like, oh, I mean, th- th- just forget about that, man. That is amazing. So listen, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Go check out their website. Start digging around on there, right? Find out what kind of equipment they have, what, what looks right for you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to feed some of the people in here because they're staring at this pork loin, and they're going, you know, a little bit bananas. So when we come back, I think I'm going to bring another chef on to, to talk about the equipment that we have in the kitchen that we use for summer dinner series, which, uh, Brian Freeman, by the way, the last summer dinner series is on August 20th with Chef Justin Brunson, who has been in the shop and has yeah. got has, and has got a yoder, yoder because yes. he knew the power of the yoder smoker. I, I talked to him the other day and he's like, I can't wait to get in the kitchen and just go bananas on the big nice. green egg and awesome. the yoder and we're going to have fire and meat and everything else. I tell people to go get tickets, but it's completely sold out. So, you know, you missed the boat on that, but there's always next year. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Proud Souls and Tony Roberts and Chris Webb more about how you can teach a guy like me who's a little bit intimidated on how to do this. And I think the easiest way is to go out and take a class at barbecue, uh, um, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, get my feet wet, learn some tricks before I, you know, before I try pulling this off with, you know, my would-be wife and all that. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> He's going <laughs> way getting, out. Wait, like, wait. Whoa, I mean, well, I holy. Pen up. Smokes. No, no, hey, can no. I get just get the barbecue and not a wife? Um. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to get eye contact first, and then I'm going to work into the whole marriage thing. So, uh, uh, we'll be back in just a second. You're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Jay and Brian. Another gr- another delicious segment. I can smell that. This old man's got to get some brisket and pork loin. Absolutely, it's amazing. It oh. came out so good. So hey, uh, for this segment, we got Chris Moore, Chef Chris Moore. Chris, Rich, you got a lot going it. on, brother. I do. Tell I us. do. I'll shut hey, up. You tell know us. what? It's great. You know, uh, uh, MSU's uh, school starts on Monday. We got a new menu debuting. Uh, Monday at Degree Restaurant, Metropolitan Food and Drink. Everything's fast, fresh, and light. Far cry from what it was before. We, we cater, we cater on property. We uh, we do Grubhub now, and it's just an amazing thing. Yeah, we do Grub. We're working on oh. Grubhub. Um, but to come here and actually cook with amazing things like the equipment that's out there uh, from Proud Souls, the Green Egg, and the Yoder. I don't get a chance to work with that stuff at work, <laughs> nor at home. Uh, but yeah, and it's uh, end of summer, beginning of school season. It's a, it's a great time right now to enjoy end of summer vegetables, end of summer grilling, and what a fabulous time this time, you know, to just get out and cook and have have life. And real quickly, we got a graduation dinner coming up. Oh, ACF graduation dinner on Tuesday the 20th at uh, Manor House. That's going to be awesome. Says, yep. We'll be back. Awesome. Or visit us at rickedelman.com. That's ricedelman.com. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, brewmaster at the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like satis, grazers, and kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale, taste lavender tripel, and the distinct horchata milk stout thoughtfully source spices and herbs enhance flavors inherent to indigenous beer styles my sincere hope is that intrepid sojourner beer project will inspire adventure and wanderlust come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn located at 925 west 8th avenue in the heart of the arts district on santa fe for everything intrepid look us up online at sojournerbeers.com and remember to drink globally locally Hey, you guys, Jay Parker here for Encore. One minute. Are you paying for your natural gas? Wouldn't you like to save 10 to 20% on your natural gas bill? Of course you would. You're not crazy. Encore Energy and Brian Rizzuto can do just that. Save you money. Give Brian a call, 720-245-5771. Maybe you own a restaurant or a brewery and use a ton of natural gas. This is how you save money. Get a free savings review from Brian Rizzuto and Encore Energy. Call Brian at 720-245-5771. Save 10 to 20% on your natural gas bill right now. Rocker Spirits. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker Whiskey. Rocker Rum. Rocker Vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rocker Spirits. 
www.dbarcoffee.com. My name is Chef Keegan Gerhardt, owner of D-Bar, and you're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. You're hot. Yes, back to the show here at Studio Kitchen Colorado. Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Tony Roberts, Chef Christopher Moore is going to sit in on this segment because he's got a lot to say about the Yoder Smoker and the Big Green Egg from doing uh, Summer Dinner Series Week 7. Uh, with seven of the uh, ACF Colorado Chefs Association chefs. Great dinner. He, everybody used the Yoder. Everybody used uh, the Big Green Egg, and, and it was a, a beautiful dinner. It was. And chef, I'll get to you in, in just a second so you can share your experience with the Yoder and the Green Egg, good or bad, because I don't know if it's good or bad. Here's a spoiler <laughs> alert. It's good. <laughs> um, but back to Tony Roberts and Chris Webb from Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, 25th and Federal. Uh, ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Let's talk about the the barbecue classes that you guys put together over there. And Greg and I were there for one, making yep. some content and some video. And not only was I there working and, and making video, but it was uh, fun. Yep. The people were having a good time. You're trying the meat. You you know, and it's a real comfortable environment to to go into. To if you're somebody like me, that's a little intimidated by the the, the barbecue world, and I'm not ashamed to say it because it's a real thing. So talk about your uh, barbecue classes a little bit, how somebody can, you know, find out how to do it. What's it cost? I, I mean, I want to know what's it cost, you know, that sort of thing. So just jump into that, Tony. Yep, our classes are a lot of fun. I think, Jay, you hit the nail on the head. Super casual, right? We want to make barbecue approachable for people. Uh, for whatever reason, barbecue can be intimidating to people. We want to make it fun, right? I mean, barbecue is something that should be spent with family, friends, you know, on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon, over fire, you know, enjoying, enjoying a good time, celebrating something, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we always talk about classes, for, first and foremost, they're going to be fun. Yeah. Second most, um, you're going to learn something, right? I mean, Chris and I and, and Dan have spent numerous years, you know, honing our craft. This is, this is what we do. I mean, we wouldn't have quit our day jobs or whatever to start a barbecue business if we weren't passionate about it, right? So the passion bleeds through. So people come in, you're going to have fun. You're going to learn something, I can guarantee it, from uh, guys like us that are passionate about barbecue, that love it. Um, we're cooks at the end of the day. We're, we're not chefs. We're, we're home cooks. But we, we enjoy it. That's what we do. Um, third, I think from, from anyone that comes to our class is you're going to get a, a, a great dinner at the end. I can guarantee you. A lot of people come to our class. One of the greatest things when, when we put on these classes, um, someone will leave our class, go home uh, the following weekend, cook something, and then come back to the store and said, I learned so much in your class Thank you, guys. That was the best brisket. That was the best bone and pork loin. That was the best steak. That was the best, you know, in some cases, hog or whatever it happens to be, whatever our classes is. That's the biggest compliment we get as, as store owners, right? When someone takes a class, goes home, implements some, some tricks that we taught them and comes back and, and compliments us. And it's, Thank you so much. My family said this was the greatest, one of the, the best barbecue meals they've ever had to us that's that's why we yeah. do it right right uh, awesome. so so I, I mean can i ask the question what it's going to set me back if i want to come out or sure. You, you... sure typically our classes are anywhere between uh 60 and 100 dollars it depends on the class so you can look at that as you know and you um, get dinner yeah, yeah you get you get a dinner you get class um, we operate under a BYOB process, so if beer or wine is your thing, you're welcome to bring that. We provide bottled water. We do hors d'oeuvres. You know, uh, Justin and Frog um, from River Bear, we always do hors d'oeuvres. We cook a lot of their sausage. We do smoked cheeses, nice. crackers, all sorts of stuff from an hors d'oeuvre standpoint. And we eat throughout the class, and then typically at the end we'll do a family salad dinner, which is a lot of fun for people. Well, Tony, I tell you, this is Brian Freeman, and I would pay 100 bucks just to learn the difference between grilling barbecuing, smoking. What do I do on this machine out here that you've provided for me? And that's just the basics. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, and I think that there's confusion I've, and, and probably why some people feel it's unapproachable because just the, the very thing, am I grilling? Am I, am I, I'm, I'm grilling, but I'm on a barbecue. And someone told me barbecuing is different than grilling. And then it has a capability of smoking. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> that's why we, we, we started to figure out that, you know, what we might think, you know, as cooks is, is just 
you know, second nature. Common sense. A lot of people yeah. don't, right? And that's the that's the beauty of it. So we kind of started kind of a crawl, walk, run, a progressive training model, if you will, for the barbecue world here in Denver. So we start off um, with the barbecue basics. I mean, I think that's as basic yep. as you can be. And that's for the guy that just came in last week, bought a grill, saw it, you know, like, hey, I want to get into this, but I don't, you know, I'm a little intimidated about going to one of the more advanced classes. So there's almost a progressive training model. So we can go over – what kind of grill you have. And those are the questions that we ask before they even sign up. That way we can tailor our class, um, you know, just basically to meet to every needs. single body's needs. Right. And that's the thing. And you'll be surprised. Most people, not to say most, but maybe 30% don't even own a grill yet. Yep. Which is cool. Like, yeah, and so cool. everything, yep. that's what people always ask. Like, hey, 225 on a Yoder, guess what? It's 225 in your oven. So think of it like that. Right. Things can translate. And then obviously. you can graduate to Correct. some bigger equipment. Right. Yeah. And I know you guys say that, you, that you're not chefs, but before we run out of time, I want to talk to a chef that has been cooking on your equipment, the Big Green yep. 8 and the Yoder Smoker, uh, again mentioned before, What's Chef Christopher Moore <laughs> who, who from uh, who de me? Degree Metropolitan Food I, and Drink and also the uh, ACF Colorado Chefs That's Association me. and who was part of uh, basically the whole dinner because I saw you cooking the things I, through I, the whole night. Talk a little bit, oh, Chef. Who has a nonprofit down in Guatemala? Uh, Guatemala? I in mean, Guatemala, yes. Uh, well, I mean, he's a I'm stud, a so this guy. I, mean, I associate with a, a nonprofit. It's a... It's a vocational school in Guatemala, but let's get back to the equipment over here. Um, my first experience working with uh, green, for Big Green Egg when I first got here in the Studio Kitchen, Colorado, have seen him, learned about him. I learned actually learned about him from Jason Morris through uh, through ACF and 5280 uh, Culinary. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this thing is a monster. You can do anything and everything on it, and it's amazing. Like today, I came in, I started a fire, and actually roasted. Potatoes. Potatoes. Most people like wrap potatoes in aluminum foil, which actually steams. To do you do a steam baked potato? These are like charred roasted mm. potato, like two baked potatoes. Uh, the Thank Yoder you, Amber Strohauer from Strohauer oh, abs Farms. Absolutely. No, they're, and they're amazing. And they, you know, we've had them here for a couple of weeks, and they're still amazing. Good potatoes. The, the Yoder itself was a little intimidating because the lid on it, the lid on it is a double hinge, and – the other chefs who's never worked with the Yoder Knight, and I learned this myself because these guys were, they were actually on air, and I went to go drop the lid, and I had put it up vertical, and I went to pull it down, and it slammed because it, it's a double hinge. So you learn that you actually fold it back. Uh, it's all wood-fired, so you actually get the natural smoke from your charcoal across anything you do. They have a plancha and a grill. You could do a double grill. You could do a double plancha on the Yoder. The Big Green Egg is an amazing uh, these so guys, they, they me, got. They got to just clarify something yeah. for the guy listening, going like, "Did he right. say plancha? Like, wait, wait, plancha. <laughs> flat <laughs> top. Like, what's a plancha? It's like a, a, plancha. Like a flat it's top. Like a griddle. Yeah, yeah. It's a griddle. Top. Well, it's yeah. Griddle. I mean, I, that's why I'm just because like, there's that's somebody good. out there right now right. goes, "Thank you, plancha." I was already googling plancha. <laughs> please, please do flat top. There you please go. Please the flat top. Uh, the big green egg. You can actually get a, a a baking stone where you can actually you can either put a pizza pizza dough on the grill. Or on the stone, and actually, because it's a hearth, it is a ceramic-lined baking uh, cooking machine is what it is, outdoor. And for this one, this is the Cadillac because it, it comes with its own rack, and you'd probably have to, like, hook it up to a trailer and put lights on it to tow it somewhere because <laughs> it weighs, like, 3,000 pounds. I'm kidding. It doesn't really, no, it's really three thousand. <laughs> it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. I mean, listen, those yes. those are you know yeah. the the Yoder specifically is a big grill, and that's probably right. not something that you start off with, you no, know. No. But I could definitely see a green egg as a starter for somebody right. because yep. that's a little bit less intimidating to a guy like me to where I can go, okay, I you know, it's a clan, it's a big clan. Yeah, I would speak for yourself. It. I think the Yoder it really defines your manlyhood. Um, if you have a Yoder, you're that's a man. Why, that's if why you are, it's, you know what? Let's 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 back up. Let's back up and back up a minute. You know, I have a I have a uh, just a simple like hundred dollar gas or charcoal grill I have at my house. I have a uh, an old school single uh, hibachi grill, cast iron hibachi, mm -hmm. like from Japanese, the old days. Yes, Japanese I love hibachi it. grill that mm -hmm. was given gifted to me in 1994, and it would probably been. It's probably 25 or 27 years old before that, that my son is like, can we fire up? Can we cook on this one? I'm like, yeah, dude, let's go. Starting you know? them yeah. young. But the beauty of it is, is, is not to be intimidated. If you can understand, the, the, the rule is, is in order to operate it, you have to be slightly smarter by at least 10%. So if you understand how it works, then you'll be successful with it. Don't be intimidated. Learn knowledge, understand how it works, and you'll be successful, period. I think, I think Chef 
hit the nail yeah. on the head there. I mean, everything's a learning process. I wouldn't expect someone that came in and bought the grill to go home and, and do a knockout thing the first time. We mm. tell people and we educate people, barbecue is a learning process, right? It's going to take you a few cooks. It's going to take you three, four, five cooks. But that's the fun of it, right? Yeah. When you start to understand how fire works and how, you know, your pit in particular operates, that's when you, as a cook, can start understanding how to make the best meal there is possible. I love it, man. ProudSoulsBBQ.com is where you need to go to get all the information about turning yourself into a better grill person. And let's, Brian, let's face it, man. That dude on the block, right, the barbecues, and, and you can tell his stuff is better than the, somebody else's <laughs> stuff. Like, that's a cool dude. You know, people don't people, be jealous anymore, people, though. People, get to proud souls. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What I'm saying is, is, is become that dude, you know, and throw a little shade that guy's way on the neighborhood where you say, hey, listen, man, I found proud souls barbecue and provisions right at 25th and federal. And it changed my life because now the neighborhood is split and half the people are going to that dude's side what, during the barbecues and half the dude, you know, half the people are coming to my side. It should be more like 30. 30, you know, 75, 25. This is all theoretical for me because well, I can't do any of it. But <laughs> Honestly, the cool thing is, and, and Chris can attest to this, it's not just dudes. No. There's a lot of gals out there. We get so many women in, women, you know, that pit come masters. in, pit yeah. masters that want to learn more. And I'm, I'm amazed at how many women awesome. are taking up yeah, the, the sport too. of barbecue, and it's really cool to see. Well, forgive yeah. me for, you know, making it all about yeah. dudes. I wasn't trying to do that. You know, I, I, trust me, I, I, I love <laughs> Young women. grasshopper, can you take the charcoal yeah. from my hand? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Tony Roberts and Chris Webb from Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, thank you so much for coming out, for thank showing us how to cut a bone-in pork loin, for, uh, for showing us how to cut a brisket and, and letting people know how to up their barbecue game. Um, do a little 30-second endorsement of Proud Souls and where you are and, and, and remind people how to get there. Yeah, come down to Proud Souls. We're there 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 2 on Sundays. We have a full meat locker. We have classes. Go to www.proudsoulsbbq.com. Check everything out. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. We have awesome specials all the time. And come in there, even if you don't want to buy something right away, just come in there and talk with us. Like I think that's we are approachable people, yes. um, and information is free. And if we can help you out in any way, that's why we're there. I love it. I'm going I'm to add something to it real quick, which is watch the Modern Eater show every Saturday night from 6 to 8 p.m. on Facebook, and you'll see the Yoder and the Big Green Egg in action every week. Every and that, week. that should yeah. soften it a little bit, too, so where you can see what they're doing with it and all that. All right, we're out of time. I have to take a break. Uh, you're listening to the Modern Eater show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Jay. Look who I've got in the corner with me. Our our favorite, our favorite, Elon Wenzel. Thanks, Rich. Welcome for coming. Good well, to be here. Welcome to coming down. Man, did you make some food, brother? Oh yeah. I couldn't believe that was a tortilla. Your tortillas, Rocky. Oh tortillas my gosh. Best. Oh my gosh. So tell us, Elon. You took the jump. You you dove in. Knives are your livelihood. Knives are my livelihood and my Pe- life. People, if, I'm going to tell you. If you want to support one of your own, one of the best in our whole community, this is the guy. And, and it's not like they're, it's, it's charity. His knives speak for themselves. Oh, yeah. Japan's best handcrafted cutlery coming to you, uh, elementknife.com. Uh, like I said, all handcrafted, and as a chef making sushi of 20 years, chefing for even longer than that, I can speak about the quality, uh, offer knife sharpening classes, uh, knife skills classes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I come to you. I'm a roving knife shop. I know. You know, the thing is, Elon's going to put you in the right knife, show you whatever right. you need to know. Whether you're a pro or a foodie or food enthusiast, we got something for you. This is the guy. We'll be right back. Thank you. Dirt. Brought to you by AbV. Hey guys, Chris Johnson here, owner of Rome Sausage. Your hyper. Can you confirm me on that live? Awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder, Jerry Rome, by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches with an. Can you confirm that you heard about that live? Made here in the great. 145. And mix some spices. Okay. And lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples and, of course, sausage jokes. 
can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. Wear black and eat spices. Hey, Modern Eater listeners, this is Zach from The Spice Guy, Colorado's favorite spice company. Spice is the variety of life. At The Spice Guy, we have a passion for sourcing the best ingredients from the best farmers all over the world. Choose from thousands of different GMO-free spices and ingredients, or let us create and blend custom flavor profiles for whatever style of food it is that you're working with. With over 1,000 restaurants, food brands, and chefs behind us, you can't go wrong when you choose The Spice Guy for all your spice needs. The Spice Guy. Spicy. Born in Breck, raised in Denver. TheSpiceGuyCo.com. 30 to the life. Colleen Ferreira with the Colorado Chefs Association. Are you ready to put your passion to work? Well, we train the future chefs of Colorado, and we want you to join us. The Colorado Chefs Association is recruiting for our fall semester right now. Join our American Culinary Federation accredited cooking program. Work in a professional kitchen and get paid all while earning your sous chef certification. Email me at Colleen at ACF Colorado Chefs. Five, two, one, you're hot. Back to the show in just a second, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about Aspen Baking Company. They're a brand new sponsor of the Modern Eater Show, and for good reason. They're an all-natural bakery. What does that mean? That means no preservatives, no artificial coloring, no chemicals in any of their bread. And trust me, if you look around at the things that are in your food nowadays, that's a big deal. So I implore you to pay attention to what's in your food. Hollis and Cody Ann over there are awesome gals, and they'll get you dialed in for whatever you need. You want hoagie, for Kacha, ciabatta, baguette, croissants, bear claws, lobster roll, pound cakes, coffee cakes. Wait, it's, wait, wait. They do a box lunch, don't they, Jay? I'm getting to the box, box lunch, Brian. Box lunches. You want a box, box lunch or catering? They do two different boxes. You can pick a sandwich, a wrap, or a salad as the main. Then you get chips and pasta salad. That's one box. The other box is the same exact thing, only now you get a chocolate chip cookie. They also do oh. grab-and-go stuff, so you can just get the sandwich. It's all baked on their delicious, all-natural bread. So Aspen Baking Company, aspenbaking.com. Go check out their website. It matters what's in your food. All Natural Bakery, ba- uh, All Natural Bakery. I almost did the whole thing without messing up. All Natural Bakery. Go check them out, aspenbaking.com. Hey, this is Brother Luck from Colorado Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of 4 by Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. And you're rocking with the modern eater. You're hot. Art Radio. Chef Brother Luck, he was just in the kitchen the other day. Uh, he forgot a pot. He had to come back and pick his pot up. Jay Parker here, the Modern Eater Show, live from Studio Kitchen Colorado. My co-host tonight and life partner Brian Freeman from Growers Organic, which, by the way, I want to give a personal shout-out to Brian Freeman and Growers Organic, who has donated singly all of the produce, not only for every Saturday night show, but for the whole summer dinner series and that's not a small thing, you guys. You know, produce is expensive. It's organic. And Brian, through the love of us and what we're doing here, has donated it all. And I just, I wanted to say, I mean, oh, that's, thanks, a, that's amazing I really that you do that. that it really is. Because nobody, nobody sees that. Right, they see the growers organic as part of the summer dinner series. They see you as as a host of the show, and all. but I just, I wanted to say that he donates a lot of product, and that translates into dollars and cents, which sometimes people don't think about, and that's a real thing because after all, every time we go to work, wherever that is, that's why we're there is for dollars and cents to create the lifestyle that we that we li- uh, live. All right, I'm off the soapbox. Let's get into beer. You ready for beer? I'm ready hey, for a beer. Jared, is Andrew Moore on the line? Andrew, you there? Can't hear you. Well, not yet. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jonathan Shikes from Denver Westward, Colorado Beer Man. Right. Welcome to the show. We've had you on before, but this is your first time in Studio Kitchen, Colorado. This is my first time in the, in the kitchen, yep. It's a great place. What do you think? I think it's amazing. I love the, the big uh, green egg, and, uh, and the uh, Albert barbecue was amazing, and the whole place is fantastic. And, and the food, just a little bit good, right? These barbecues... They're rocking out some incredible food here. What oh, yeah. Think? I mean, they're, uh, they're making the, the food I've had so far is amazing. I know you're a beer guy, but does it pair well <laughs> with what we've got going on here tonight? Well, I have, I've had a couple of the beers. Um, I, uh, I haven't had them together. I was just 
I was in the corner just drinking all the beers, actually. But, uh. <laughs> um, Good man. Yeah. Flight Co. Brewing in the house. And yes. I'll, get to, I'll get to Jason in just a second. Um, uh, we're trying to get Andrew Moore over the phone. We want to talk a little bit about Denver Beer, business model of tap rooms. A lot of the uh, breweries, uh, Jonathan, are saying, you know what, we need more tap room. Right, because the, 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 the packaging is, is not where we're at monetarily. Like, we're not making the money off of that. Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project and, and co-owner Andrew Moore have gone a different direction where they say, you know what, we're not crazy about the taproom model. We did it as, as, a, as a project to find out what people like, and now we want to package and distribute. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Do you see a lot of that happening in the city, or is it a rare thing, or, or is it just situational? What they've done is pretty rare. I, I haven't, there hasn't been a whole lot of examples of people wanting to get out of the taproom model right now. The taproom model is, is what is, is working. Uh, even the bigger breweries that have been packaging for, for 20 years are looking to increase the number of taprooms. They have the customer focus. It helps with marketing. It uh, just has better margins. Uh, Odell it now will have two taprooms in Denver. The only other example that I can think of uh, uh, was is a brewery called St. Patrick's that's down in the southern suburbs. They also decided to sell their tap room and to just start packaging. Uh, I'm not sure how that's gone so far for them, um, but you know, I, if if people think it can work, uh, uh, then hopefully, hopefully, you know, maybe it's a gamble in the long run. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting model because it's it's more like you're using other people's bars as your sort of canvas as the place that you're testing things around town, it's risky. I mean, in some ways, it's a boomer bust, isn't it, Jonathan? Yeah, it is boomer bust, and, and you've got to be able to sell enough beer to make it worthwhile. If you can't sell enough beer to make those, it's very small margins when you, when you package beer. So if you can't sell enough, then you're going to have a really hard time uh, making a profit. Well, and, and they're innovators over there at Intrepid. I mean, the, their beers are really incredible unique flavors. I mean, the first time you drink their basil IPA, which most people would shy away from, you're like in love, or I was. I mean, and so, I, hopefully, I, I, and not hopefully, I mean, I think these guys have the gusto to make it work. I'm going to be sad to go into, not to go into their tap room anymore, because I did like their little tap room over there on 8th and Santa Fe. Um, but it, it's exciting, though. The beer world is constantly changing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the beer world is, I mean, every year at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year, I write a story where I predict what I think is going to happen in the coming year, and um, it's always completely different. It's, what, uh, what did you write about this year, uh, and, 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 and what's the contrast? I mean, I, wrote, I mentioned Seltzer because, I, because the Brewers Association had uh, made uh, it so that breweries can... Um, belong and they can make other beverages but i had no idea that that hard seltzer was gonna just absolutely explode onto the scene the way it did um i didn't know that the taproom model would would be so important for some of the bigger uh some of the bigger breweries the odell odell opening a second place in denver really surprised me um so there's just there's always a style or a trend or 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 a new model of doing business that that comes out of nowhere at least from my perspective mm-hmm. and, and surprises me and throws me off. So well, and even the big it. guys open tap rooms because Blue Moon, yep. has that massive tap room down downtown and that's not. I mean, it was a craft beer from Colorado at one point, but now it's owned by the mass mass guys, the big boys. Yeah, I mean, it was it was actually founded. It was actually started by by Coors um, back when uh, when Coors Field opened in 1995. And they, uh, they made it there, and then they slowly expanded it and grew it um, until it became a beer that actually, you know, a lot of people credit them for, for uh, expanding people's palates a little bit. It became such a big deal, and it was so different than, than some of the other lighter industrial lagers that, it, you know, some people feel like they, they, paved, they paved the way when it, when it came to palates. But their, their place is amazing that the, they opened. They should have opened it 10 years ago, I think. Uh, they, they probably wouldn't have gone to Rhino because there was nothing down there then, but... But that's a. They have a great. They have a great facility. You get a cheaper lease that way when you start out when, when there's <laughs> yeah, nothing when there's there. Nothing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you grandfather me into about thirty years at that price? <laughs> uh, that, that'd be great. Yeah. If, if if we all had a crystal ball, you know, mm-hmm. that, that'd be one thing. Um, well, no, Andrew Moore from Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. So let's just. Uh, let, we're going to have to take a break in a couple minutes. But I want to introduce uh, Jason Slingsby. Am I saying it right? Yes. Yeah. Slingsby from Flight Co. Brewing, and. Uh, Jonathan, I know you wrote an article about uh, Flight Co. Um, Jason, before we go to break, you got about a minute and a half. 
just tell us a little bit about the distillery where, or I'm sorry, not the distillery, the brewery, where you are, kind of the styles of beer that you're making. And then when we come back from the break, we'll dive in a little bit into more detail about uh, everything, about the beer here in Denver, opening a new brewery, breweries closing down, you know, is, uh, what's, what's going on. But do the rundown of uh, Flight Co. Absolutely, yeah. So we uh, were fortunate enough to open up in March this year. So we've been open around five months now. Uh, we're right at 38th and Tennyson. So super excited to be part of the Tennyson community. That whole area is just amazing. Um, but we're an aviation-themed brewery. Myself and one of the other owners are both pilots, and we built that in. And we really, you know, we're talking about the taproom spaces here versus, you know, distribution. We really focused on the taproom model. So we can seat 160 people. We really built that into our theme and really tried to make it an experienced place for everyone. Jason, can we get some food there too, or is it just a tap room? Uh, so we are just a tap room, but Barbed Wire Reef has a restaurant next door, and we treat them like a food truck. They'll bring food over any time of the day, nice. and so we always have that available, and then we have extra food trucks available on the weekend, Friday through Sunday. Interesting mm-hmm. model with the food truck thing and the beer, and Jonathan, you've probably seen a lot of this, um, to where some, some breweries, and it's not many, but they're opting, like, I mean, I don't even want the hassle of a food truck anymore because they run into problems, so they're we're building a kitchen. Kind of rare, but it happens. Don't say anything. I'm going to take a break. I like it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, it's more with Jonathan Shikes, Colorado beer man from uh, the Denver Westward, and Jason Slingsby from Flight Co. Brewing. Master You're- Brewer. Master Brewer. Thank you. And Pilot. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in a second. You're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Another fantastic segment. Hey, we're heading into the home stretch. Put your seat backs up, your table trays up. You know, I'm here talking with one of our favorites, Tony from Proud Souls. And we're having just a little conversation here, and he shared something with me. And I'm like, Tony, we need to talk about that. This is a big deal. Yeah. Tell us. I'd I'd love to talk about it. So um, in September, we're heading out to the American Royal. We'll be one of 600 teams competing for a, a world championship in barbecue. We'll be representing Colorado. We're super stoked for that. Uh, the following month in October, we'll be at the World Food Championships in Dallas, uh, competing in the barbecue uh, category there. So happy to represent Colorado there as well. Um, obviously, we're excited. We hope to, to bring home a title, but we'll have, we'll have fun regardless. You know, that's the difference. When you go to Proud Souls, when you see the equipment, you're truly dealing with some of the best in the biz, and not just local, but nationally and internationally. We're blessed to have people with your expertise here in our city, in our state, to take care of this. Well, thanks, Rich. We, we appreciate that. You know, obviously, barbecue is uh, a huge passion of ours. It's something that we've dedicated our lives to, and we, we couldn't be more excited to, to share our knowledge with, with all the folks out here in Colorado. So we, can't, we couldn't be happier. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Thank Tony. You. We'll be back. In 13, I left the fine dining industry to start a sustainable organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow, we are the leader in sustainable growing practices, utilizing our natural resources as effectively as possible. No pesticides, no GMOs, no funny business, just clean, honest food production. We use old world techniques combined with modern technology to bring you the best possible produce. Our gourmet mushroom facility provides CO2 for our greenhouse that grows tilapia as well as lettuces and herbs in our aquaponics system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market, and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow Mushrooms, we're growing greener. To learn more about aquaponics and see our products, go to our website at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. My dad's vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. Hey, Colorado chefs, Brian Freeman with Growers Organic and the Modern Eater Talk Show. Do you care about where your food comes from? I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who care about that as well? I can help by providing top quality organic produce with reliable delivery, knowledgeable sales team who genuinely care about how food is grown, transported, and served. Chefs, Growers Organic will ensure you have excellent ingredients for your next James Beard dinner, your nightly specials, or your regular menu items. Join the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local. Colorado- Ten seconds. Weston Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake... Colorado Mills today, available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. 
Okay, do you want me to get Andrew on or no? Who's in the new segment? I like my beer cold, my meat grilled, and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair Can I call him and the first time? Beer. I did, yeah. He got on there, and then I don't think you heard me. I told you twice that he was there, but... We can't hear you, Jared, on this side, babe. Okay, t you're up. You're up. You're up. Back to the show, Jay Parker. Greg Hollenbach is not in tonight. He has the night off with Brian Freeman, Growers Organic. We are here with Jonathan Shikes from the Denver Westward. Colorado Beer Man writes uh, uh, articles about beer, right, in, in Denver specifically. Also, we're here with Jason Slingsby. I can't remember it. I have to look at his name, Tad. <laughs> Slingsby, who is a uh, brewmaster and a pilot, uh, just so happens with flight. And a person. With flight a good person, brewing. too. Also, yeah. 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 I mean, well, I, don't, I, I don't know. We'll throw him in the human yeah. category, too. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's a good person. I just met him. He, I mean, hey, he seems man, like he, a any very, guy who I makes a beer, beer like yeah. this, seems and like, he brought it. He's a good person. Seems like right off the bat. Very sweet man, but you know, you just never know. Along those lines of your beer, let's pour some of your beer and get some tasters going and Tell us uh, what you have, and then uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail about Denver beer and, and what, what the culture is right now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start with this one. It's a uh, guava pale ale. Uh, that, I'm um, tracing that right now. Yeah, some is. of that. Yeah, so we. Just fantastic. Here you go, Jay. We Let brewed me, this. Turn that just over a hint of that guava. Adds some sweetness, which helps balance out the hop profile. But overall, just easy drinking pale ale. Yeah, um, this one's been huge for us in the tap room. I'm brewing it all the time. And we actually have a tap account now up at Coors Field for this beer, which is huge. So we're serving it at the Rockies game. Congratulations. Wow. And I'll tell you, for a pale ale, this is really nice, man. I, the hop, here's, here's what I think ruins a beer. It's too much hops. Everybody, it's like the biggest note in the damn beer. Darn beer? Sorry. Damn beer. Damn beer's okay. <laughs> um, but it, and that's the one thing that I think ruins it. So thank you for making a pale ale that is palatable. Yeah. No, we, we've really loved this style. Um, and uh, this one's been huge for us in Tap Room. Um, but a fun one to make. Another one we've got here we just released on Thursday. Uh, this was actually a collaboration with Brews Beers. Um, right, right, which right. sponsor the show, right? Or uh -huh. one of them? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is a new one kind of for the fall. It is a... Uh, Bread of Myases, uh, Cherry Porter. Um, so kind of a lot of our beers oh, follow that traditional kind of American style, and we focus on the, the Blonde Ale, Pale, Amber, you know, Porter, IPA. Um, but we've got some other stuff in the mix, too, and we just released this kind of breaded sour beer. Um, just to kind of so add this something is a sour. Else, so. Yeah, it's, right got, it's the, got those sour notes from the Bread of Myases. The color, tell me, Jason, the color's not normal. I mean, this isn't... Yeah. I, I'm seeing a different, like, and, and maybe it's my eyes this week. The I'm getting glasses. Not, but Well, it's, it's, it's almost like a I mean, red. No, no, no. It's almost like it's got a, an amber it's, it's got color a, to it. So it does. It's a dark porter, um, which has that kind of, you know, that black beer with that nice tan head on it. But then the little bit of cherry, just um, cherry puree that we add into it really kind of sweetens it up and adds that tint. You just made it all for me right yeah. there. Because did you see, I, Jay, all uh, of a sudden when you said cherry I'm and here Jay for you, man. Like, just, no, oh, man, man. It's, I'm still laughing at you saying that it's not a normal color, <laughs> which I'm looking, I'm going like, looks You don't like see a, that little bit of red. It's almost like a red, like what I said. With the, I can see. Get that hint, yeah. Jonathan Shikes with the Denver Westward. Uh, what's your favorite kind of beer to drink? You, do you drink a lot of beer when you're out in Denver, you know, educating yourself on the breweries and who's opening, who's closing, what, or closing, what are they making, you know, what's new? I educate myself quite, quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> I wouldn't trust you if you didn't, right? right it's yeah, like yeah. me. I don't drink, right? So I smell it. And which, by the way, I have to go off the of smell, right? But that, and I remember the drinking days because it hasn't been that long. But I'll tell you what, that would be my jam right there. Really? This, this, this weird colored beer that you make, <laughs> that would be my jam. But, but Jonathan, uh, He's got go ahead. more weight. Don't cut him off. What, 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 kind of, what kind of beers do, do you enjoy when you're out around the town uh, working? You know, I, I've been... Uh, I've been drinking beer for and, and writing about beer for a long time, and so I'm always I'm How always long? well. I've been uh, I've been writing about beer for over over ten years. Um, when I, I was the managing editor at Westward for about ten years, I started writing about beer uh, at the beginning of that time, and now I, I'm not full time at Westward anymore. I, I just do their beer stuff for them, and uh, you know I've seen just you know so much change from the from the different styles to to the trends that go on. Uh, my own palate has gotten to the point where I'm just always seeking something like bigger, different, bigger and different. Um, so I, I tend to look for the hoppiest ho of the hoppy beers. Oh, really? Sorry, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Because some people really like that. Yeah. I mean, and some people want that like 
almost cotton mouth is what yep. I get from it. Yep. Yeah, it happens. And then, you know, uh, things like this cherry, this cherry uh, Britannomyces beer, really, you know, I, I like that stuff too because it, um, it's, some, it's something different. Can you say that word again? What is it? Canamyces? What it, Britomyces. What is that? Uh, it's basically, I heard it three times before I go, okay, I, I, you don't know what it is. Ask somebody <laughs> what that means. Uh, it's basically another yeast strain, but it, it adds that funkiness to the beers, and it's used a lot in souring programs. Okay. So it, well, works, it works slower than the traditional Saccharomyces yeast, but it, it provides a lot of really cool flavors for the beer. And the it, hardest gives, it gives beer, that bigger, that, you know, that different that you're looking for. The hardest beer you make, Jason? Oh, hardest. Um, you know, most of them... The, I, I have to say, like, some of the kettle sours, because there's a lot more that can go wrong. So they're not necessarily hard, but there's a lot more room for error. Um, you're introducing a bacteria strain into the kettle and letting it sit for a couple of days while, like, it's souring the beer. And so you need to do that cleanly and in a very sanitary way to make sure you get a clean sour. We've got a, somewhere floating around here, we have a pineapple goza. Um, I ta- that was my first beer I tasted. Yeah, beer. so that's a kettle sour. So that's got an extra layer of complexity into the brewing process. Well, when some brewers say that they don't like making pilsners because it's hard, what, what does that mean? Uh, do you guys make, and I should ask, do you guys make a pilsner over at, at Flightco? Uh, we don't have a pilsner on right now. Uh, we will be doing some lagering soon. Um, but that would be my guess is just the lagering process takes a lot longer. Um, you know, it's, it's time and money, and it's, it's taking up a fermenter that, you know, people want to push beers around, and that's why most of them are still ales. But it's good to have a good pilsner on. We have a cream ale right now, which fits a similar profile. Profile. Um, but we'll be doing a bunch of lagers come this fall. Nice. That's the voice of Jason Slingsby from uh, Flightco Brewing. New brewery been open since uh, March, yep. right? Yeah. So about five months. Jonathan Scheichs from Denver Westward, beer columnist. You did an article on Flightco, correct? Did, yep. Can you give us the cliff note version of what you saw when you were in there, what you liked, what you didn't like, if that's even applicable? Sure, yeah. I mean, when I went in there, I mean, you know, well, when you drive over there, one of the first things you notice is how hot that corner, that, you know, Tennyson Street is. I mean, that, it's, just, uh, it's just an explosive and really, really fun area. A lot of people don't, don't like how fun it's become, you know, over the last few years. Uh, other people just, you know, they, they migrate there. They, they love it. Um, they're right on. They're right, uh, right off the corner. So it's a terrific location. Uh, on the inside, you know, today to stand out in Denver, I think you have to do something a little bit different. Um, you can make you can make good beer. You can make great beer, but you also have to make a place that people want to come back to, where they, where they feel comfortable. And everybody feels comfortable in a different kind of place. But when I was in there, they were still, you know, they were they were just getting ready to open. But boy, they had. I mean. The, the kind of things that they have in there, they've got a, they've got a mock fuselage from an airplane. They've got a bar that's made out of a, is it made out of a? Uh, made out of Marston mat, an old yeah, uh, yeah. temporary runway material. Yeah, temporary runway material that they used during the uh, Vietnam War or Korean War to, to, to set up uh, runways in the jungle. They've got, you've got something, you've got an airplane wing in there, I think? or uh, Yeah, we do. We have an old home-built RV6 plane. Yeah. Uh, the wing is built into a table. Uh, the other wing is used as our display shelf for merchandise. Elevators or a couple high top drink tables. So, so yeah, it was a terrific spot. It's funny when Jonathan says, you know, you have to do something to stand out aside from making great beer, right? I mean, you obviously have to start with great beer because if you're making, you know, crap, nobody, it doesn't matter what the inside's like. People will figure out that your beer is not good. But I like that because uh, one of my questions, and we're going to run out of time before I got to it, would be, you know, why open a brewery in Denver? You know, why in Denver? Why not kind of pick somewhere else to where maybe you'd have a better shot at, at success or, you know, whatever. But we can't get to that question anymore. <laughs> but I do like the fact that he says, listen, you've got to put some bells and whistles. If you're going to do the tap room model, which that's what most people are doing and, and increasing tap rooms, you've got to put some bells and whistles in there because people have to remember you and they have to want to come back and there has to be some something fun aside from good beer because let's face it there's a lot of good beer in Colorado now so you need something more than good beer we're running out of time so before we do that I want to thank everybody who was on the show today chef Christopher Christopher Moore chef Andre Joseph uh, Little Rich Snyder thank you for the Little Rich's Corner Element Knife Company and chef Elon Wenzel thank you for coming on Proud Souls Tony and Chris uh, ProudSoulsBBQ.com they will get you all dialed in of course Jonathan Shikes uh, with Denver Westward and also uh, Jason Slingsby from Flight Co. Brewing we'll see you next week ever wonder why you're